Today we're going to be replacing a 4-year-old alternator with a 24-year-old alternator. Uh-oh. That's the battery light on in the Tacoma. It can only mean one of two things. Alternator's going bad or the battery's going bad. I think this means that either the battery does not have a full 12 volts or the alternator is not charging correctly. I don't know a whole lot about alternators. What I do know is alternators create alternating current and they have diodes that only let the power flow one way which turns it back in direct current. They have voltage regulators that only let them put out so many volts. Usually I think they put out about 14 volts. I think a battery is supposed to be charged to about 12.6 volts. And what else about an alternator? That's, that's pretty much all I know. So let's see if we can figure this out. So this right here is the alternator with this pulley on it right there. And what it does is it makes power which keeps your battery charged and runs all your electrical systems. If it goes bad, the battery no longer gets charged. Everything starts just running on battery and it drains very quickly and the battery dies. So, all right, let's do some tests here. First, we're gonna test the battery and see how many volts the battery has right now. It should have, I think, about 12.6. We got this cheap little multimeter here. I think this came in a soldering kit we got from my son. Probably you can buy something like this for less than $10. That stands for DC volts. We can turn it to 20 or 200 since we're just looking for 12 volts. We'll do 200. And we'll take the red lead and put it on the positive and the black lead and put it on the negative. Red on the positive, black on the negative. We have only 12.2 volts. That's pretty low, I think. So, let's see. Well, we know one of the cells. I think if a cell goes bad in a battery, see this has, just like lithium ion, you know, cordless tools and stuff, they have several cells in them inside here. And if a cell goes bad, it'll drop so many volts. Like, I don't know, I can't remember how many cells are in a 12 volt battery, maybe six cells or something. And they're two volts a piece or something. So if one cell goes bad, the power drops down to like 10 volts, etc., etc. I could be wrong about that. Somebody can correct me in the comments, but I think the battery is good because we got 12 volts, but we don't have 12.6 ish, which is what we want. So now let's test the alternator. And the way we'll do that is when the car is running, we will put a lead on that right there, which should be that bolt right there holds this cable on there, which should be the hot, the power going to this. And then the way DC current works is, you know, power come, goes in one spot and it has to come out another to complete the circuit. And the way it does that is in a car is by grounding. So all the metal surfaces in the car, which you can see right here, this a grounding wire, all the metal surfaces are hooked together and then hooked to negative of the battery itself. So the way we'll test this is we'll put the red lead of our multimeter on that nut right there. And then we'll put the black lead on any major metal surface, or we can even put the black lead back on the battery itself on the black side but it won't do us any good unless the truck is running since it's not making power because right now if we test it it'll just get battery voltage and I'll show you that right now so we're gonna put the red lead on the nut down here actually right in the middle of the the bolt itself that bolt I think is made out of copper and then we'll put our black electrode on the negative of the battery and we've got 12.2 volts there as well. So that's showing us that we have a complete circuit from the battery to the alternator. And it's basically just showing you battery voltage at the alternator. So we know it's connected. We know that the alternator is grounded good because the battery voltage is going from the hot of the battery 
to the terminal and back through the ground to the negative of the battery. All right, next we're gonna crank the truck and do the same test on the alternator again. So I'm putting the red lead on the bolts on the alternator again. And on the, the black lead on the negative of the battery. And that voltage is going crazy. I'm thinking it's making alternating current. Let's, let's turn it to AC. AC voltage. Yeah, something's really screwed up in there. I think a diode or something has gone bad. Well, there's definitely something messed up in the alternator. Maybe some of you know exactly what it is. My guess is it's a diode. That's just my guess. I'm guessing it's making alternating current right now. So the diode's supposed to take alternating current and only let it flow one way, sort of like a check valve. And so it turns alternating into direct current. And now something's messed up and it's just fluctuating and it's really high voltage. Looks like it's really high voltage. I don't know. If you know exactly what's going on, please comment. But obviously, something in the alternator is messed up, so we need to replace it. I've never had good luck with aftermarket alternators, so we're looking at used alternators here. This should be the original Denso. It says it's only got 55,000 miles, so I think we're going with this. So, here is the new alternator, or new used alternator. It supposedly has 55,000 miles on it, maybe, out of a Toyota truck. It has the Denso sticker on it, serial number and all. Apparently they just cut the wires on these things. There we go. I just cut that off too, look at that. <laughs> Oh, that's good. You know, so we get the nut and everything. So, I didn't want to go with a auto parts store part because these Denso alternators, I don't know about the ones for this truck in particular, but all the Denso alternators I've had, frankly, I've never had one go out. So this is the first time I'm replacing an alternator. I'm wondering if the alternator on, that's on the truck now, since it has 400 and some thousand miles, I'm wondering if, say, 100,000 or so ago, the Denso alternator went out on it and they replaced it with an aftermarket one. I don't have a manual for this truck, but I'm hoping since these things are all over the world and everybody uses them, they probably built them pretty simply so that anybody could work on them anywhere, even without a manual. So, just going to dive right into it. Looks like we just need to loosen this, or actually probably tighten this, which will end up loosening the belt, and uh, probably need to loosen that, that bolt a little bit right there. And there's probably like a pivot bolt on the other side of this alternator that we'll need to loosen or remove at the same time. And then take out that quick connection right there and take off the hot conductor right there. It's probably going to be hard to position the camera to film this well, but I'll put it somewhere. Hopefully you can see something going on in here. Before working on a car, you always want to start by disconnecting your negative battery lead, especially when you're working on something electrical. It appears to be a 10 millimeter. Now I'm going to remove this quick disconnect. Come on. I have to get in there with two hands. Two hands and a screwdriver. There it goes. I'll take off the hot conductor there. Looks like it's going to be a 10 to. There we go. that nut back on there so we don't lose it just in case we need it 
Now let's tighten this, which is actually loosening the belt. I think this is a 12 here. Is that right? I'm going to find the bottom bracket too. I don't think that's getting any looser right now. Let's see if we can find the pivot bolt down there. Yes, there it is. So we just need to loosen that or actually totally remove it since this thing's coming out. I think that might be a 14. That's it. Don't tell me I've got to have two wrenches on that thing. What? Oh yeah. I gotta get another one and hold the other side. On some cars, the pivot bolt goes through and into another threaded part of the car, but this one goes through to another bolt, or to a nut, actually. And so now I'm turning this, they're just both turning, so I gotta get something to hold the other side. All right, got this ratchet spanner here. Put that on the other side. Where in the world did I put that? Oh no, it's still down there. <laughs> oh, silly me. Now we're getting somewhere. There we go. And push that pivot bolt through. So it comes out the other side. save those. Now we're moving. So I'm loosening this bolt and then just pushing the alternator toward the engine block and loosening the belt. And we can slip that belt off. There we go. Now we'll just go ahead and take this bolt all the way out and I think I think that'll be it Turn that like that Let's see we can get this thing out might have to drop it there it comes and where are we gonna go with it go down go up I think I'm gonna have to remove this whole bracket here in order to get that around it and out. What was that another 14? Yep. There we go. Yes. All right. Now for the alternator. There she comes. Ugh. I can already tell. Aftermarket. Car quest. So I think my theory was right. I think they probably had a Denso alternator on this truck for 300 plus thousand miles. In fact, I think I've got the paperwork in there that probably has when the guy had the alternator changed. And they changed it out with a car quest alternator, which, you know, is a rebuild of a uh, Denso because I don't know if you can see this here, but there is an ND right there, which I think stands for Nippon Denso. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Let's see if it has it on this. Oh, it actually doesn't have it on this. Well. It's been good. It feels good. Oh, that one squeaks. Wow. That one sounds good. It feels good, nice and tight. All right, well, now we're gonna take this piece of cable off and start the install.
Actually, first let me see if I can find that paperwork and see how many miles this alternator was changed at. All right, so I found the work order where the alternator was changed with a lifetime warranty and a one-year labor warranty. Mileage, zero. But it was in 2017. Let's go back. Twenty seventeen. What is this? Twenty seventeen. Does this have the mileage? Mileage three thirty eight seven oh eight. So in nine twenty six seventeen, the mileage was three thirty eight. Another one. Mileage 340 in October of 2017. So it looks like I was right. It's definitely it's definitely in the 300,000s because okay, this was is this the alternator one? No, inner and outer bearings. Here's the alternator one. May 19th. Yeah, so it must have had okay. If this was May and was September it was just a few months later so it had over 300,000 miles when the original alternator was replaced I'm assuming that's the original alternator that was replaced with that one because I can't find anything else in here so if the original had over 300,000 miles on it and this only has 55,000 if the advertisement was right, then I should get, what, 250,000 miles out of this? It's much better than aftermarket, isn't it? So let's first drop this new alternator down in the hole. Let's see, I guess it needs to go like this because that is where it pivots. In the hole. Alright, I think it slid into the bracket there. Oh. See if we can get this Pivot bolt. No, that's not the pivot bolt. Here's the pivot bolt. Put the pivot bolt in there. I'm just going to slide this around to a find where it. This is going to get really old really quick. Oh, there it goes. Nice. Get that on there. Take our 214s and tighten it back up. Which way is tight on this? That's tight. Now I'm not going to tighten this all the way until I get the alternator belt adjusted. So I'm just going to snug it just slightly. There we go. I can still move it, but it's on there. Good. Now the bracket. I have to fish this bolt through the belts over here I think to get this on. So I'm going to have to go back inside the belt and in through there to get into where this screws in. But I gotta put the bracket on at the same time, which I don't know if I can do that, and hold the camera. Bracket goes there and then I gotta get that bolt through so I'm gonna need two hands for this. Alright, so we're getting it in now.
I'm not going to tighten that all the way either just yet until I get this part of the bracket set up right. But before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and put my belt over around that. So we got the belt on the alternator pulley, the crank pulley, and the fan pulley. Now, this bolt back through here. Alright. Now, the way to tighten this belt is to tighten this bolt, I guess. So we're just gonna crank down on this thing. Like the rest, we're not gonna snug it up just yet. Just gonna get some tension on that. Now I'm gonna go back and tighten the bracket bolt. Now that I know that this bracket's lined up exactly the way it's supposed to be. Back in there. bracket bolt is tight. Now I'm going to crank this adjustment bolt in until this belt has no sl slack. The uh, rule of thumb that I go by with belts is tighten them tight enough to where they don't slip but no tighter. Starting to get a little tension on there. And there are actually ways to measure how much tension is on there. You put like a ruler and press so many pounds against the belt and uh, measure the deflection or something, but I'm just going to go with that right now. So I can push about 10 pounds of weight on that and it looks like it's moving about half inch. I might want to go a little tighter than that. I don't know though, that's about how it was before. Let's put a little more tension on there. Alright, we'll try that to start with. That's pretty good. Now I'm going to go back and tighten the pivot bolt on the bottom of the alternator. Alright, I tightened that pivot bolt off camera. Now we're just going to hook up the electrical. Take the nut off. Put the cable on. Nut back on. All part of working on cars. This actually should have like a rubber boot that covers it up. I guess it fell off somewhere. Too tight for hand and too loose for socket. There we go. Come on now. Come on now. There we go. Alright. That should be good. Now, let's get this quick connect in. There we go. Nice little click. Get the battery back up. Now we're going to start it up and make sure the belt's not slipping and squealing or anything and doesn't sound like there's any bearings grinding or anything. Then we're going to retest our voltages and make sure that this new alternator is putting out the right voltage and it looks like it's charging. showing battery voltage that's showing that the alternator is putting out 14.2 volts to the battery so I'm going to touch my red lead to the alternator 
bolt down there and see if we get the same reading. We should get exactly the same reading. 14.2 volts DC. It's not jumping all over the place. It's not showing like 120 volts. That is a good alternator. 24 year old used alternator. can see around these bushes. Just have to kind of creep out here. Hope for the best. <laughs> 